The Naughty Mole, A Book About Obedience by Educational Technologies Limited. The cold, snowy days of winter have arrived. But inside the mole's house, it is warm and peaceful. Let's all have a long sleep until the warm spring comes again, say Mr. and Mrs. Mole. Everybody in the mole family is tucked up in their beds, except Ben. That is, Ben doesn't feel even a little bit sleepy. It's boring to go to bed. I want to stay up and play. Be quiet. Be quiet, Ben. Your noise is keeping us all awake, says his father. I'm sorry, says Ben. Ben goes quietly back to bed, but he has a plan. As soon as everyone is, is asleep, Ben packs a small bag and he sneaks out of the house. Wow, it's all white, he says. As he sets out on his adventure, Ben leaves deep footprints in the snow behind him. Ben slides down the hill and he sleeps around in the snow. He is having so much fun. He doesn't even notice the big snowflakes falling around him. The crisp new snow is just right for building snowman. Ben gives his snowman some ice and adds a mouth. By the time Ben finishes, he feels very cold. He wants to go back to his cozy, warm house. But when he looks back, he sees that the falling snow has covered up his footprints. He can find his way home. Ben wanders along miserably. Ben wanders along miserably, even though the snow is no longer falling. He doesn't recognize anything, and his home feels a long way away. Then he sees a young mouse skating lightly across an icy pan. Hello, my name is Ben. What's yours? I'm Tess. Do you like me skating? Skating. Skating looks fun, says Ben. I think I'll try it. He slides carefully onto the ice. Soon he reaches the middle of the pan. But just as he is about to make a turn, the ice under his feet begins to creak and crack. Splash! Ben falls through the ice onto the freezing. Splash! Ben falls through the ice onto the freezing water below. Help! cries Ben. It's so cold. Luckily, Mr. Rabbit and his son are collecting firewood nearby. They hear Ben's cry and rush to help him. Quick, catch the rope! Mr. Rabbit wraps the sugaring. Mr. Rabbit wraps the sugaring Ben in a blanket and leaves him onto their sledge. They set off for the rabbit's home just as the sun begins to set. The rabbit family hangs Ben's clothes the rabbit family hangs Ben's clothes up to dry and leaves him to sleep beside a rolling fire. He's so tired, says Mrs. Rabbit. When he wakes up, we'll find out where he lives and take him home.
Back at home, Mr. and Mrs. Mole discover that Ben is missing. But it's so cold outside, his mother cries. She, she lights some lanterns and the whole family sets up in search of Ben. They are all really worried about him. After a while, they come to the house of Mr. Mouse. Sorry to disturb you, says Mr. Mole. We are looking for our son Ben. We are worried that he is lost in the snow. I know where he is, says Tess. She tells them about skating on the pan and Ben's rescue by Mr. Rabbit. Hurry! We must go to the rabbit's house at once, says Mr. Mole. Ben, thank goodness you are all right, says Mrs. Mole, giving him a big hug. We are all so worried about you. The Mole family thanks the rabbit family for their kindness. Nobody scolds Ben for causing so much trouble. I'm sorry. I didn't do as I was told, ma'am, says Ben. I promise never to be selfish again. I promise never to be selfish again. That's all about the story of the Naughty Mall. What the story tell us? Bedtime at the writing. Sometimes it feels so much more exciting to stay awake rather than going to bed when we are told, as Ben finds at the beginning of the story. However, we should remember that if we don't go to bed early enough, we won't get enough sleep. And then we will feel tired and irritable the next day. Number two, considering the feelings of others. Sometimes it is tempting to do just as we please and ignoring the feelings of those who love us. This is a selfish behavior. Ben behaves selfishly when he keeps his family awake with his noisy play. He also being selfish when he leaves home without telling his parents because he chooses not to consider how worried they will be when they discover he is missing. By the end of the story, Ben realizes he should have behaved in a less selfish way that is deserving of his parents' love and concern. Number three, obeying our parents' wishes. Because he is young, Ben doesn't have the experience to recognize dangerous situations. He doesn't stop to think that setting out on an adventure by himself could lead to trouble or that stepping on the ice might result in an accident. Sometimes we think we know better than our parents and so we choose to do something that they would disapprove of. But our parents are usually wiser than us. So we should always remember to obey their wishes. Number four, sorry to disturb you. Mr. and Mrs. Small apologize for disturbing the rabbit family late at night. It is polite to say sorry if he might be interrupting people at an inconvenient time. Number five, offering helpful information. In the story, Tess knows that what has happened to Ben and she passes on this information to his parents quickly and clearly. We should always tell grown-ups the truth about the whereabouts of our friends, even if we think they might get into trouble. It could help them if they are in a dangerous situation. Number six, saying thank you. The mole family thanked the rabbit family for taking care of Ben. When people help us, in a way, 
it is polite to thank them for their kindness. Seven, being scolded. It is understandable if people who care about us get angry when our selfish or thoughtless behavior puts us in danger and causes them to worry about us. It is because they love us that they scold us. Sometimes they might be so relieved that we are safe that they will not scold us at all. But we still know that we did wrong. When ben, Ben's parents eventually find him, they don't scold him because they are so happy that he is safe and can see that he has learned his lesson. And lastly, saying sorry. An apology is only meaningful if it is sincere. At the beginning of the story, Ben says he is sorry for making a noise and keeping his family awake. But even while he is apologizing, he is planning to leave home without telling his parents. Later, Ben realizes that he has been wrong to behave so selfishly and he apologizes for his behavior. This time, he really means it. So that's it, guys. So I hope you have learned some values in our first uh, story. Thank you, Miss Susan, for the wonderful story. Till next time. Gaspi, amazing. Please do like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell button for more upcoming videos. Bye!